Hello. Cheers. Slurpy time. <coughs> so, get sorted. Hello. So, I mentioned in a video, I think maybe the last video or the one before, um, as we're looking towards the end of the year, I would do a quick or quickish, um, quickish kind of recap on the year, my year, which has been a, a year of change to say the least, really. So, a quick recap. Um, going back slightly over a year, I was in Pinecones, Dersingham, Norfolk, and I was still in Ishi. It was Christmas time. Um, there were several people on site that I knew, and a couple of people came to see me on site, which was lovely. Um, and I ended up having Christmas dinner with Kirsty, Van Quest, and Bill, who has now left YouTube, uh, but I believe he's got a channel somewhere else, I believe, I haven't found it. Um, and Bill did the cooking. Thank you, Bill. If you watch this, Bill, thank you. It was lovely of you. Really lovely. Got some happy memories, really. It was nice. It was nice for me, Kirsty, and Bill all to meet up and share some time and space. Uh, I'd met Bill once or twice before. I'd never met Kirsty, and at that time we were all three full timers. Kirsty and Bill still are, as far as I know. I don't know what's happening with Bill, but as far as I know, they are. And I'm in bricks. So, we had a Christmas dinner, we spent most of Christmas Day together and it was absolutely lovely. It was good, good just to chill, you know, chill and chat and be, you know. We're no airs and graces, you know, we're just three people. We met up and uh, it was nice, uh, but thank you Bill for cooking. Um, so that was a Christmas, so I was there until the very last day of 2017. Um, that evening actually Kirsty came round which was lovely I wasn't expecting anybody to come round and we just had a coffee and a chat and it was really really nice spent a couple of hours in each other's company so that was great um, bright and early in the morning New Year's Day of 2018 um, I set off from the site not a soul on the road you know I went for miles and miles and miles I didn't see anybody but anyway I ended up uh, renting a bungalow for only a very short period of time um, and it wasn't a great experience for lots of different reasons uh, but mostly I suppose I was no longer an issue and I think the reality of the situation of my health of the reasons why I gave up Ishi. I think the realities of that were setting in and I wasn't very happy really, not deep down. Um, we had terrible weather, we had the beast from the east if you remember, that was January and February. Um, so I was grateful that I was in bricks during that period of time, definitely, so that was nice. Um, and then I got offered another bungalow, so um, I took it obviously took it in a heartbeat click you know and uh, here we are still in the same bungalow um, now the bungalow is a lovely little bungalow it's uh, I've only got one bedroom one bedroom and a small lounge a small kitchen small bathroom I don't need any more than that really I would like a garden and I don't have a garden but I'm very very blessed really because this village has a lot going for it there's a little river um, a huge park the woods are just at the back of the bungalow um, there's several lovely little walks not very far away at all which is great so and the village has several little amenities and things that I use and, and stuff like that so I feel very much part of this village literally on the first day I really felt at home as I was coming here, I was going home and walking in, it was home, 
you know, whereas obviously the other place it was never my home, but this was instantly. So um, yeah, so I moved in here in the March. So I've been here what eight months or whatever it is, um, and we love it. The only there's a couple of little things you know you could say, couldn't you? <laughs> what is the ideal? You're never going to get the ideal. I'm probably still searching for the ideal. Um, I would like a garden. I'd like a little place with a garden. Um, and maybe a little bit more space, although I think I've got so used to this now. This is a million times bigger than what I was living in. So uh, it's great, really. I do love it. So quiet. I can't hear a single thing now. I can sit here, meditate, read, do my art. There's not a sound. It's lovely and it's surrounded by trees and fields and it's just so beautiful. It really is. Um, saying all of that, I am sort of thinking about moving on. I know, sort of. I can't stop bloody travelling. Um, only for... If I get the ideal offered me, then I will move on. And the ideal is something like this in a tiny little hamlet, little village, whatever, with a garden. Um, and there's a couple of little things about this that I don't particularly like, I suppose, but 99% I love. I've fallen in love with the place. So chances are I should be here forever more, really. But there's always a but. In my life, there's a but. You know, I'm always... I'm always kind of thinking, what if, you know? Um, I suppose that it's my um, my wanderlust <laughs> way of being. Um, a friend of mine said, bloody hell, bro, you're still moving, still traveling, even though you haven't got a vehicle. Um, because obviously I went from Ishi to the bungalow, from that bungalow to this bungalow, very, very rapid, really, and just... A, few months it was bing 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 like that you know so maybe I always will maybe I don't know I hope not in a way I hope I settle I'm very very calm very peaceful very connected to this village and I do feel very settled so I feel very content and that's why I say I might be here forever um, but if the ideal is out there if it is and I'm not really actively looking but I do look sometimes um, and I catch myself looking, so that tells me that I am searching for something. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm searching for something that doesn't exist. Who knows? So, yeah, we moved here. That was in the March, um, just at the end of the bad weather. We had a little bit of snow, so I was in the village in the snow. And then the spring in the village was absolutely wonderful. And that's when I met most people, really. Um, got a few friends around the village and I know all the neighbours and things like that. Um, and then obviously the summer. And please don't forget 2018, what a summer. Beautiful, it went on and on and on. Absolutely lovely. Um, yeah, then it was um, tailing off the summer. August was my birthday. Um, August was a, well, my birthday was a bit of a shame. I heard from three members of the family that said happy birthday. And I think that's a real shame. I honestly do. Because I, I bother with them and I still bother with them. Um, but whatever, it is what it is. You know, you can't change it, can you really? Um, so that was August. September came and went. <laughs> so did October. November and here we are December looking at the end of the year and we're still here but very very content. It took about maybe six to eight weeks to get the bungalow how I wanted it. Um, some of that was waiting for things to be delivered. Um, I could buy things cheaper I know I could but I wanted certain things. Certain things only come from certain places in certain countries so um, I did I did wait a number of weeks, sometimes six or eight weeks, for things to arrive in the post. Just to make it feel like home, you know. Um, but very oddly, what also happened this year was 
um, my depression. And I think that started, if I'm honest, and I look back, I think it started the tail end of 2017 as I was preparing to get into bricks, to sell Ishi, to move on, to stop traveling. I think I didn't deal with that very well in my head. I just pretended, oh, so I, everything's fine and everything wasn't fine. You know, and it proved out that it wasn't fine. Um, it was a real wrench selling Ishi real wrench and it still is even now a year later nearly a year later I miss traveling I miss the travelers I miss so many of my friends I miss the places and all the people I met and all the rest of it I really do miss that and I knew it had to come eventually because of my health um, it's just as it is you know so we have to accept it and move on and I have done now I think now I'm doing much much better you know, I'm, I'm not going to fully accept, I suppose, that I'm not living in a van. I absolutely loved it. I took to that life like, well, actually, it's the best thing I've ever done in my life. Big, bold statement that, the best thing, and it is. So, yeah, the depression kicked in, um, came to a head mm, late March, early April time really and I didn't do much about it um, I didn't see where I was going by about mid-April um, there was a lot of triggers and a lot of signs that I should have been picking up on and I didn't I was getting out of bed between 6 and 7 a.m. I'd be back in bed by about 9 get up for dinner time have an hour or so awake, go back to bed about one-ish, sleep most of the afternoon away, get up at five, a couple of hours, and I was so tired, I just went back to bed. And that became daily, that became my routine. And I didn't realise, I didn't pick up on it. There was other things as well, you know, I was eating, when I was awake, I was just so hungry, I was just eating any old rubbish, you know, absolutely crazy really, but I didn't pick up on what was going on now people always say with depression well what caused it where did that come from and often there's no rhyme or reason you know you can dig as deep as you want there's no rhyme and reason it's just as it is it's just something that happens sometimes um, and really for me yeah okay I, I'm I was probably fed up of moving twice, um, fed up that the first place didn't work, fed up of selling an issue, whatever. But I could cope really with all of that. So the depression really, there's not any one thing, one cause. It was just a set of circumstances and it was, I just didn't pick up on, on the triggers. Absolutely crazy. Um, if you want me to talk about what actually happened, what finally happened in another video, then I will do. Um, but for now, I think I'll leave that. Um, that aside, my health improved initially uh, moving into bricks. I felt much better. I could shower every single day and I've got warm things, you know. I've got like a warm... Um, throw thing, electric throw in my bed, and that's lovely. I've got a foot massager that's also got a heat setting on it. Oh yes, I have. Um, hello, darling, come and see us. Hello, you are right? <laughs> Bless him. So, initially, sorry, initially my health did improve. Um, Quite a great deal, actually. And I felt really, really good. But I also questioned, what am I doing in bricks? If my health is this good, what am I doing in bricks? Why don't I get another van? That's what I questioned. And then the common sense kicks in. 
and the reasons why I'm in bricks is because I can't drive a lot. Um, changing gas bottles became such a problem for me and even just climbing up those steps, two, two steps, you know, I couldn't do it. I was struggling. I was struggling with so much to do with the life that I began to not like it. And I thought before I begin to hate it, I've got to change it. And that, that's where we are now, you know. Um, so initially my health was much, much better. Um, and then I got this bloody lymphedema in my feet, my ankles, coming up to my knees and also on my thighs. And that's been for about, oh, I don't know when I first saw my doctor. Probably four months, maybe five months, something like that. Um, we've tried various things, can't really do much about it at the moment. However, the last two days, only in the last two days, things have started to get a little bit better. So I can feel and see an improvement. My feet are still very swollen, um, can't move my ankles very far. But I can feel there's an improvement. There's certainly, I can feel my kneecaps, um, well, my left kneecap I can feel. I couldn't feel my kneecaps before. They were just, my legs were just round all the way down. So things are happening. Things are getting a bit better. So that's good. Um, and really, we're looking forward now to the winter. We're lovely and warm. You know, no problem with the heat whatsoever. I've got electric storage heaters. Um, took a bit of getting used to, I suppose, really. Jules, I was chatting to Jules, and he said they're pretty good, actually. He's lived in a couple of properties with storage heaters and didn't have a problem. So that settled my mind. So I thought, okay, trial and error and all the rest of it. And you've got the inputs and the outputs, and you have to get them right. It's... At the moment, because it's mildish, you know, um, it's just a matter of getting it right. You have to look at the weather every day and then make up your mind how many hours of heat you're likely to use. So then before you go to bed, you then do the inputs, what energy, what power you want coming in, you know, and then you have to adjust that in the day for the output. So a little bit of faffing around. It's not like central heating, but I've got used to it. We're lovely and warm. You know, um, two years ago, if I was making a video, I would have been sat here with three coats on and two hats. I wouldn't have been sat here, would I? Um, so, yeah, I think we are happy. On the whole, we're quite happy. Um, I'm coming out of the depression. It's taken a long time. And I'm slowly coming out of the depression. I'm much, much better. I'm 90% better than what I was. I'm still having some odd things happening, some odd times, bad times maybe, things like that, but they're getting less and less and, and we're managing things in, our, in my head. I am managing things in my head much, much better. So that's good. So um, all in all, if we don't look at the depression or the... Um, the lymphedemia and the osteoarthritis has been a great year and it has really um, I didn't think I would enjoy living in bricks as much as I am and I really am tonight's meal is a huge well I mean dished it up but it will be huge I tells you a huge spaghetti bolognese and uh, that is in the slow cooker as we speak I can smell it so um that's going to last me about three days. And things like that, you couldn't do living on the road. There's so much, it's just easy living in bricks. It really is. Flick of the switch, the lights are on. Flick of the switch, the heating's on. You know, a hot shower, whenever you want. Washing machine, tumble dryer, fridge, freezer. You know, it's a different life and a different world altogether. So throughout the year, the whole year, um, I've continued to do my art. And especially when I was depressed, I found that I could go to a place that wasn't depression when I was splashing my paint around. So that was really good. And um, I think I produced some wonderful pieces this year, really good pieces. 
Um, so here we are now, December. I am going to make some videos uh, and they'll be up Christmas Day. So for those, if you want to join me, if you're alone in particular, if you're having problems, troubles, worries, um, whether it be depression, whether you find yourself on your own, if you're newly divorced or uh, you've lost a loved one this year, or for whatever reason you're alone, I will be about Christmas Day. I'll be opening my YouTube, opening my Facebook. You can contact me on both. I will do premieres on Christmas Day so we can watch the video together. So I will be there in the chat, live in the chat. Um, and if you want a private chat after that, you're more than welcome to. Um, you know, don't feel that you've got nobody out there. You may be alone, but you don't have to be lonely. There are people out there. So we'll be back. Oh, sometime between now and Christmas, obviously, we'll be back. But that's just to let you know what's happening Christmas Day. Keep an eye on Ishii Art. My last three paintings are going up on the 13th of this month. And they're wonderful, glorious. That's my year in a nutshell. Take care then. Be well. Try and be glorious.